Howdy, kids. The 2022 NFL season is upon us, and I'm Bob Harris, Senior Editor of FootballDieHards.com. It's week one. That means it's time for the injury review, preview, update, and overview. The thing I like to do every Saturday to get you up to speed on all the injuries you need to know before you set your lineups. If you've been out doing things, life is getting in the way, you're not studying and doing the daily grind as much and you just need to get caught up quick, this is where you do it every Saturday afternoon. We'll be posting this video. Just kind of run through the games chronologically, let you know what players need to be on your radar heading into Sunday before you set your lineups and uh and i'll do that now remember uh things will change i record this at about 1 p.m eastern time so check the late breaking update section from then on to get make sure anything any changes or you're caught up on then sunday uh, saturday overnight and early sunday i'll have much more information in the late breaking update section or go to the staff rankings page you'll find links to all the pertinent players and their position on the rankings will also give you an indication you see a guy that like as a top five player at the bottom of the rankings, you can probably guess that it's probably due to injuries. Just click the link. It'll take you to the update and tell you what's going on. Uh, so there we've set the table. Let's dive into the injuries. Again, I go through these chronologically so you have a good understanding of what kind of fallback plans you need in place based on kickoff time. So I'll start with the early afternoon window on Sunday. And J.K. Dobbins, the Baltimore Ravens taking on the New York Jets in New York. J.K. Dobbins listed as questionable coming off the torn ACL that sidelined him all last year. He has worked this worked some in August. We haven't didn't see him in action at all. And he's been limited in practice all week. Uh, it seems like he's trending in a good direction. Although Lamar Jackson said at a press conference earlier this week, it's going to be great when they get him back in a couple weeks. You know, what? Uh, John Harbaugh subsequently said he's trending well. He's ascending. So it's looking like he might go, but this one seems like a true game time decision. And maybe they go other directions. Behind him on the depth chart, Mike Davis, the former Falcon. Uh, Kenyon Drake picked up uh, after the Raiders cut him last month. Justice Hill is also there. So you want to watch this one. The real question to me is even if he's active, do you expect to get a full workload out of him his first week back from that torn ACL after not seeing a lot of him throughout the summer? You know. You might want to find it. You might want to find an alternative even even if he's active. Zach Wilson on the other side of the ball has been ruled out. He will not return until after Week Four, according to head coach Robert Sala. So Mike Joe Flacco starts this week's game, and he'll hold on to that starting job as long as he performs well. Flacco starting against the team that drafted him. We'll see how that goes for him. Mike White standing by if needed. And again, Zach Wilson progressing. He's been practicing and working on the side, getting himself back after knee surgery. He's suffered a bruised knee and torn meniscus uh, during exhibition play. Here's a big one. George Kittle listed as questionable with a groin injury. He did not practice all week. They're playing in Chicago. The weather forecast is for rain. And the field is supposedly field conditions have not been great all summer. They did resod it. Uh, sounds like uh, some of the Bears are happier with it. But is it in good shape? I don't know. That may be determining factors in whether George Kittle plays or not in this one. That, you'll really want to watch this one closely. The local observers don't think he's going to play. And so that leaves Tyler Croft, Ross Dwelly, a handful of outliers. Don't think you want to dip into that well if you don't have to so look at your other options there on the other side of the ball Vilas Jones Jr. the rookie uh, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears is doubtful with a hamstring injury that's kept him out since last month Byron Pringle's back in the mix he's healthy after missing time in August as well so uh sounds like Equinamia St. St. Brown will be the starter opposite Dar Darnell Mooney I don't know if you want to dig any deeper into that receiving court Cole Komet's a viable play as well but beyond Mooney and Komet you might be taking your chances and Vilas Jones don't expect him to play for the New Orleans Saints at Atlanta, Michael Thomas. We haven't seen him play since the 2020 season. Um, it's been a pair of ankle surgeries since then. Now he's dealing with a hamstring issue. He is over the ankle issue, ankle problems. Sounds like he was off to a good start in camp before the hamstring arose. He's practiced on a limited basis this week. I am kind of have high hopes for him. I drafted him extensively, but uh, I'll, be, I'll be watching this one closely. They do have other options there now in Jarvis Landry and the rookie Chris Olave. So... Uh, watch this one closely. Atlanta, not a horrible matchup. They have some good corners, but in general, they gave up a lot of fantasy points to wide receivers last year. So I'm kind of eager to play Mike Thomas. Go check out the website, my DFS3 and out article. You'll find out more about Michael Thomas there. And again, check the late breaking updates for more on him as well. I have some more in-depth stuff there. Drake London on the other side of the ball, the rookie wide receiver. First round pick, eighth overall by the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, has been dealing with a knee injury since the middle of last month. They've been easing him back in. It sounds like he's trending in a direction to play. I know at least one reporter there uh, said on Thursday that he was practicing. He was moving around like a guy who looked like he'd be playing. You'll have to watch that one, though. Fortunately, the early kickoff will give you some options. Look, maybe you don't need to play Drake London this week. Maybe you can give it a week to see where he's at. Maybe Michael Thomas. Maybe all these guys is a good idea if you have the roster room, but you won't always have that. Miami. Hosting the New England Patriots, uh, the key players on their injury report came off. And by the key players, I mean Jalen Waddell 
and Chase Edmonds, both dealing with minor issues. Uh, Waddle's had a quad injury that goes back into August. He practiced uh, on a limited basis all week, went up to full in the middle of the week. Same with Chase Edmonds, who has a groin issue. Uh, Raheem Mostert standing by, running back if needed. Miles Gaskin opened the week on his report. He's off. Salvin Ahmed is the only guy questionable. For the Patriots, different story. Their offense seems to be questionable. <laughs> There's been a lot of consternation about how the scheme's working out with Josh McDaniels in Vegas. And Matt Patricia, uh, defensive mighty coach, Joe Judge, special teams coach, failed head coach, is coming in to take over the offense with Bill Belichick leading the way. Renowned defensive mind. So it's been a bit of a process. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, Jacoby Myers and Ty Montgomery both listed as questionable. Jacoby Myers seems like the guy who's kind of like the New England Patriots questionable, which is like if they still had the probable designation, he'd probably get that. But the Patriots uh, tend, to, uh, tend to play it safe with the injury reports. So watch that one. I don't know if you think you need to be forcing any of these guys, certainly not Montgomery into your lineup. For the Washington Commanders hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars, of course, Brian Robinson Jr. is out after the shooting, but he is off his crutches. Shot through the knee, no significant damage. Uh, he'll be ready to return at probably next, early next month. In the meantime, Antonio Gibson is the lead back. J.D. McKissick, the complimentary receiving back. Seems like status quo from last year, at least for the first month. Logan Thomas, the tight end, uh, tore his ACL and did other limit damage to his knee, MCL as well, I believe. Uh, he is uh, questionable. This seems really uncertain for him. I don't know that I'd be forcing him into the lineup if I didn't have to uh, this week, but he is questionable and could be available for you. That takes us to the late afternoon window. Uh, so we have Al Lazard for the Green Bay Packers. They're at Minnesota. Lazard is listed as doubtful, did not practice all week. Uh, he's not going to play. Uh, so that leaves the question open, which wide receivers do you trust there? Is it week one superstar, Sammy Watkins? A long history of great week ones. Randall Cobb, the veteran that, ran, that Aaron Rodgers knows well. Will it be one of the rookies, Romeo Dubs, the hype guy from this summer, really came on, showed some great playmaking ability. Christian Watson, the guy they invested in with a second round pick, but who dealt with the knee injury all August. I think all these things are possible. What seems not possible is Al Lazard playing this week. So his debut as the de facto wide receiver one of this offense is put off for at least a week. He's got stepped out of practice. How does that happen? And by the way, Robert Tunyon is back. He's off the injury report. Sounds like he'll be ready to play. David Bakhtari, the offensive tackle, questionable as well. Uh, another offensive lineman questionable there. So watch that. Uh, everyone good to go for Minnesota. For the Arizona Cardinals, Ron Dale Moore ruled out after a hamstring issue uh, injury he suffered in practice midweek. Not a good sign. Uh, Zach Ertz is the player that most people have their eye on here. He is listed as questionable with a calf injury that goes back to August. He's been working on a limited basis. Cliff Kingsbury made it sound like he would. He expects him to play. The question then is how much? And that was where Kingsbury kind of left it hanging. They do have the rookie Trey McBride. They have Max Williams also available at tight end. So uh, it'll be interesting. But there's some room in this receiving court. DeAndre Hopkins will miss the first six weeks of the season on suspension. That leaves Marquise Hollywood Brown traded from traded for uh, on draft day with the Ravens. So he's like the wide receiver one. AJ AJ Green is there. Danny Isabella. Dorch, they have some other guys, but it's like a, an interesting situation with, uh, with more out. They have big plans for more, they say. So we'll see. But he is out, and Ertz is questionable. Watch those. Donald Parham Jr. for the Chargers, hosting the Los, or at Las Vegas. Or, yeah, hosting Las Vegas. Uh, this is a, has the makings of a shootout. Uh, Donald Parham is listed as doubtful with a hamstring injury that goes back to last month. Don't expect him to play. Gerald Everett will be the starter tight end. They have a lot of weapons there. I'm really excited about this game. Devontae Adams' first game with the Raiders. We'll see how that goes. Darren Waller just got a contract extension earlier today, Saturday. So he'll be playing with a big fat wallet. It makes him very happy. So a lot to like about this game. But Donald Parnum is not one of those things you'll like. Sunday night, the Buccaneers at Cowboys. It gets dicey in this one with the night kickoff. It's going to be hard to trust Chris Godwin and Russell Gage. Both of them are listed as questionable. Uh, Godwin coming off the ACL from last year. He's been practicing this week, worked on a limited basis uh, at least part of the week. Early in the week, got in a full practice, took a day off, then, then got listed as questionable. So we don't know where he's at. Uh, the game time decision seems like a legit game time decision. So it makes him very difficult to play. Unless you say have Julio Jones or another fallback option, maybe on the Dallas side of the ball. Michael Gallup has been ruled out. He has been practicing and looked good this week. The question is, who steps up? Is it Noah Brown? Is it Siki? Uh, I can't even pronounce the name. Uh, Jalen Tolbert is a guy that's on the on the list as well, but it sounds like the recent reports haven't been positive on him. So be careful there with receivers not named CeeDee Lamb in Dallas. 
even the ones you can pronounce. Monday Night Football, Kenneth Walker III, uh, dealing with a hernia, has not practiced up to this point. Saturday injury designations will come out, whether questionable, ruled out, etc. after I do this video, so watch the late-breaking updates. On the other side of the ball, K.J. Hamler uh, has been working on a limited basis. He did play in the preseason. The expectation is he will play as Russell Wilson takes those Denver Broncos back to his former uh, home field in Seattle for a revenge game. So interesting stuff there. And again, Kenneth Walker, don't expect to play. If that's the case, uh, Rashad Penny has a super clear path to workload, and he was very good late last season. All right, there you have it. All the injuries you need to know about, go back, check the website, right? Check the late-breaking update section. Check the staff rankings. Uh, there'll be links to the latest articles for all these players there. If you see someone suspiciously low, it's probably because they're hurt. Look at the notes. Check out what's going on. I'm Bob Harris. Thank you very much. Good luck in week one. I hope you didn't play Cam Akers or Allen Robinson. What a horrible start. But it's early in the season, everybody. It'll get better. We'll talk to you next week.